I started with this little definition of literacy. We picked this up off an old poster, and I'm, I'm not, I don't know if it's an old Laubach one or an LVA one, but it was sitting in our office on a wall, and most of us didn't even see it anymore. But I had a businessman come in uh, to visit, and he really wasn't that interested in getting involved. He just came in because a friend asked him to come meet with me, so he did. And it was when he read that definition of literacy being the short shortest distance to individual social and economic development that he suddenly got interested. And he's been hooked ever since, and he's been very, very involved in helping this merger happen. This was my attempt to put our sort of short-term history on one piece of paper. Um, on, on, on this circle, is what was happening at Literacy Volunteers. In 2006, we decided to not reapply for our government funding. The economy was still pretty good then, but it was pulling us off mission. Uh, we were getting way too focused on standardized testing. Uh, the, the adults who needed our services most were the ones that were being the most affected. And so we decided to tell them they could keep their money. However, we made that decision a year before we knew the renewal was going to come up, so we made as much noise in the community about that decision as we could. We talked to everyone who would listen uh, and told them why. And 99.9 .9 of 100 people was impressed, thrilled, and wanted to help. And that's what we were asking for, was help. At, at the time we made this decision, it was a third of our budget. Um, and we decided to make that decision. We also had to hire a development director to raise more money. So we were walking away from a third of our money and we were increasing our budget. So we talked to donors, foundations, the media, um, our volunteers, everybody, business leaders, and, and we tried to put that same message out everywhere. We put it in online, our newsletters, our website, uh, any talk radio show, TV show, anything I could get on, uh, I gave the same message. Uh, we also used the Benevon fundraising model, and my last slide has some information on that. <clears throat> so we do literacy briefings once a month which is inviting people in. It's not a fundraiser, just inviting people in to learn about literacy, why we do what we do, and why it's important to our community. So at literacy briefings, we started to talk about that. We invited government officials. We invited uh, funders. We invited uh, CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, everyone we could think of to come to a liter one of our monthly literacy briefings. And then those literacy briefings culminate once a year in a fundraising breakfast. And that's, that's the fundraiser <laughs> where you ask for the money. But again, that breakfast heavily was focused on help us do our mission, help us serve those hardest to serve adults. We're doing, you know, we're walking away from this money to stay true to mission, so help us. Uh, that breakfast, I think, was the second or third one we had done, and we raised $180,000 that morning. Um, th the message we told was always the same, the current problem, um, how literacy volunteers and the work we did was a solution to that problem, and why that solution was important to our community. Now, at the same time we were going through that, the second circle is what was happening in the community. The Community Foundation for Southern Arizona received a million dollar bequest to be used for literacy. Uh, at the, right about the same time we were making our decision, just a nice serendipity. But they didn't give it to us, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> But what they did was they started to do their homework as a foundation to learn about literacy in Tucson, because they really didn't know. So they came to us literacy providers to teach them. So we built a nice relationship with them. And then the next year, the community of Tucson did a, a regional town hall that was sponsored by the Community Foundation and the Southern Arizona Leadership Coalition. And because of that, relationship we had built, and because of the bequest, 
one of the areas to be studied in that three-day town hall was literacy. I happened to be seated next to the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. And when he heard my presentation, we all had white papers to read, so presumably he had read it. But when I gave some of the facts and figures that morning, he was appalled and immediately pledged the assistance of the chamber. At the same time, there, or maybe a year later, there was another organization new to Tucson that was being formed, also nurtured by the Community Foundation and some lead philanthropists in Tucson called Social Venture Partners. And some of you may have SVPs in, in your community as well. Well, the SVP in Tucson chose literacy to be their focus, and they chose Literacy Volunteers of Tucson to be the first program they would work with. Um, again, a very, and it was just as we were leaving state funding. That's probably one of the reasons they picked us, because uh, we were hollering about how much help we were going to need. Um, also at that town hall, there were two business leaders that attended, and they walked away saying, you know, that, that need of literacy and our passion for books, we should put together and create a festival for books in Tucson. And we just had our third annual book festival in March. It's now the fourth largest in the country after three years. Uh, over 450 authors and 100,000 people come through in one weekend. And we're looking to turn that. We already get some funding from there, but we're looking to increase that. So, this, but in the middle, that arrow down the center is really talking about what, those were the, the happenings, but along with that, what was really important was the relationship building, the trust that was being built in those relationships, and that we were all working on common goals. When we left our state funding, and having studied Terry Axelrod's Benevon model, uh, what we knew was that 83% of philanthropic giving in the United States comes from individuals. Very little really comes from foundations and even less comes from business. But when you look at where we put our time and energy in fundraising, it's backwards. So we decided to right the ship and start focusing on individuals. The good news is, no matter what the economy does, giving from individuals goes up virtually every year. The other good news is, is that recent brain research shows that giving stimulates the pleasure sensors in the brain. It feels good to give. It feels good to know that you're making a difference. But there's thousands of good causes, and so the big question is, how do you get people who are giving money to give to you. The second part of the lesson, besides focusing on individuals, is then you focus on the donor more than you focus on your own organization. So you be very donor-centric. And our development director actually has those three red questions taped up above her computer. Why us? Why now? Why you? And she attempts, in everything she writes, to be answering those three questions for donors. The why us is, what are you doing that's so uniquely important and wonderful that I would want to support it? Why now is, what's the big hurry? What's changed? What's critical now? And why you, the you is the donor. Um, and the questions to ask yourselves are, are donors a critical part of your vision? Have you made them your heroes? And do you appeal to their emotional triggers? And what interests donors is, what, what have you done with my money? What have you accomplished? What's your vision? Like, if I gave you more, why would I give you more? What are you going to do with it? Recognition. Uh, know if it's important. Some donors want to be recognized, some don't but they all want to know that they're important to you. And then efficiency. They want to know that they can trust you with their money. People don't give to problems, they give to solutions. So someone in the session this morning for Literacy Powerline said he was selling, I think it was John, said you're just selling literacy. 
Because literacy is a solution. If you focus on it as the solution and not the problem, people are more interested in, in supporting that. So I gave you just a, a little sample. We try to use the word you or your in everything we write to our donors as much as we possibly can. So the little sample there is, you have helped LVT to tutor 49% more students this year. Thanks to you, 842 adults now have the opportunity to improve and so forth. So you get the idea. And I love this quote from Dale Carnegie. He said, you have more fun and success when you stop trying to get them, the donors, to give what you want, a donation, and start helping people to get what they want, which is a feeling of having accomplished something because of giving to your organization. You end up in the same place with the money, but the point of view is totally different. And now you have a real partnership with that donor. This next slide just shows you a little bit about how Literacy Volunteers has grown since our decision to leave our state and federal uh, dollars. Our last year on state funding, we served 554 students. Last year, we served 1,904 students. Our budget went from 280 to $780,000. Um, bequests was on that little wheel at the beginning. You never know about bequests. You can't count on bequests. But in 2005, we received a bequest from a donor we had never met for exactly one year of state funding. That helped our board uh, have the courage to make the decision that they made. And I've never even been able to meet this donor's family, but I hope somewhere she knows how much good that money did. The following year, we received a bequest for $10,000, which was the beginning of the salary of our new development director. And it was actually in 2011, we just received another 12,000. So you, you never know, but we do have a planned giving program that we have, have built in. Um, you'll also see then just the little chart below of how our individual donations have increased and our, our foundation donations went up a lot. And now during the tough times in this recession, foundations are really pulling back. Um, but as you'll see, our individual donations continue to increase at a slower rate than they were before the downturn, but they're still increasing. I mean, I now have, when I started at Literacy Volunteers in 2002, we didn't really have very good donor records, but the best I could find is they had two donors who each gave $500. Um, I just spoke to a donor as we were going through the merger, I spoke with a lot of our major donors to see what they would think about it. Would they support it? And I asked one of these donors, she's a $5,000 donor, if she could increase that next year to help with the shortfall we would have because foundations were pulling back. And she said, well, I could do 25 if you think you could match it. It's like, I never had anybody I could ask for $25,000 before. So in thinking about sort of what, from that story, what could you take away? What sort of the universal connection? It's kind of like what we just heard the keynote speaker say. It's network and collaborate anywhere and everywhere you can. Just be talking to people. Uh, I have one wonderful board member who she just goes places just to meet people, just to see who she might meet that she can invite to a literacy briefing or invite to our literacy breakfast. Um, I do the same thing. I just go to places thinking, well, that might be a good place. You never know who you're going to meet. So the first thing, the first takeaway would be just look for opportunities and be ready for the ones that you don't expect because they will come. Second one is learn and embrace sound fundraising practices. Third one is take risks. I mean, well-considered risks, but don't be afraid to take risks. If you don't take risks, you'll never grow. Uh, fourth is to have a bold vision and be passionate and be solution focused. I mean, if you're passionate and solution focused, that's very contagious. And the fifth one is just to communicate with all of your audiences as frequently as you can and in many, as many different ways as you can figure out to do that. And then this is, uh, this is just a slide on, on references, and I know you're not going to be able to read that, but it'll be online. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.